In this video, I'm going to teach you how to play The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which is one of the most famous melodies written for bassoon. It kind of encapsulates what the bassoon is all about, a little bit mischievous, a little bit up to no good. Uh, it's, a, it's a really fun song to play. This melody actually comes from a larger orchestral work by Ducat, where the, actually the whole bassoon section is playing this thing. So what I'm playing for you today and teaching you to play is actually straight from the orchestral piece. There are a couple things that I want to point out about this orchestral excerpt. The first thing is the key. Notice that there are four flats in it. B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. So just make sure that you're playing all of those flats unless there is a natural sign next to it, of course. So the other thing that I wanna point out in this is the time signature, which it doesn't immediately show you in this excerpt because this is like right in the middle of a bunch of music. So it doesn't clearly show it, but it is in three, eight time. And if you've never played in 3-8 time before, that's okay. It's really similar to 3-4 time. It means that there are three eighth notes in every measure. And so just similar to how you would have three quarter notes in every measure, now instead of quarter notes, you have three eighth notes. And it's not counted one, two, three, one, two, three, one, but it's counted one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's felt in one, but you still gotta kinda have that that one, two, three in the back of your mind subdividing through it or else you won't be able to play it in time. So really keep the three eight in the back of your mind but feel it in one. One other thing that's kind of important about this, it's a little hard to explain um, but that I want you to start at least try to think about and incorporate into that you're playing in this is yes, it's felt in one and there's emphasis on beat one one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But you also have to make sure that your three always leads to the one. And that does a couple things. It kind of stylizes the music a little bit more. So there's more uh, forward motion and it also keeps you in time. So if you think instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, we're just, there's a lot of emphasis on beat one, thinking one, two, three, 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 one, two. This is marked mezzo forte right at the beginning. So nice, comfortable dynamic that you kind of maintain until uh, right at the end there where it says poco crescendo, which means that you're going to get louder up until rehearsal eight where it ends. And in the orchestral version, you know, this is a big bassoon solely. So we want the audience to hear the bassoons, of course. Starting in the second line, where it goes when you start getting at the top of the bass clef staff and just above it that's where you're in your flick note range so if you don't know what flicking is i don't want to go deep into it in this video because that's going to take too long to explain but i'll link a video where i explain what flicking is and how to use it um and it you basically have to use your left thumb to flick keys open, in this case, on the B natural, the B flat, and the C. And you don't have to do it for the A flats because that's the highest note where you're gonna keep your whisper key down. So if that doesn't make any sense to you, go watch that flicking video and hopefully that'll clear up what I mean. Um, but just make sure that you're flicking starting, I guess the first note would be the B flat um, in Normally I would have my whisper key on the G, but because this is going so quickly and I want to make sure that my flick notes speak correctly, that I'm actually going to take my thumb off the whisper key probably on that G so that it's ready to flick my B flat key. So just keep that in mind that you can take your left thumb off the whisper key a little bit earlier so that you can achieve that technique. When you get to the repeated C's in the third line, you don't wanna flick those C, 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 cause that would be uh, really repetitive on your thumb. I would just vent, which means hold the flick key down. And again, in that video, I explain 
f what venting is and, and when you should use it. And that way the C's will speak because I repeat it and you're, you're at the start of a crescendo. I really think the last C is where the arrival of that, of the beginning of that crescendo should be. Bum, 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 Like that's really sort of, the last C is sort of an arrival and then I'm coming down. Bum, 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 bum. It just kind of helps shape all those repeated C's so it's not just ba 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 right? It's a little bit more musical, expressive. And then we come to this little grace note, which is something that always trips people up. So you gotta practice this slowly. If I was playing this for the very first time, I'd first play it without the grace note, so I just know how the, the main notes sound. Right? And then eventually I would slowly start to put in the grace note. And you want to think about the grace note as coming just before beat one. Bum 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 and sing it and play it and do it slowly do it without the grace note uh, to try and get yourself get used to getting used to playing it and then you continue all the way down to that low C so a couple things to keep in mind you're still crescendoing it's really easy to want to rush down to that low C and just be off to the races uh, but you want to Still keep that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, beep, bum, 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 bum. Very, very steady. Use a metronome in this instance. This would be a good place to use a metronome to keep yourself in check about what your tempo is. We also have a tendency on the bassoon to, as we get into that low register down to the C, to play really sharp. So make sure that as you're transitioning down to that low note, practice it just like I just played it so you're really practicing getting lower in pitch I'm really opening up so starting on that B flat two measures before rehearsal eight I'm starting to think about transitioning into the lower voicing so I'm opening up my throat a little bit more giving the, the note more space to play in tune. Everything in this melody is staccato, which the bassoon is great at staccato. We can play really short and really dry notes. So it really is well written for the bassoon in that respect. So instead of thinking of staccato as super short, I like to think of staccato as having more bounce, especially in this context. There's a buoyancy to the staccato, and there's a nice, um, at the end of each note. Bum, 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 bum. So each note is, has a little bit of a rounding or a taper to it, depending on how you want to think about it. So there definitely is a style to the staccato that takes a little bit to achieve. And I definitely recommend if you're struggling with the articulation in this to check out my articulation video, which I'll link up above. And in that video, I talk about like just bassoon articulation in general. And a lot of what I talk about in there directly applies to this. And this is such a great example of staccato on the bassoon and how to appropriately achieve it. It really, if you if you can play Sorcerer's Apprentice in the appropriate style with your articulation, then you've come really far on the bassoon with your articulation. <laughs> video was helpful for you please make sure you subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up let me know if you'd like to see more of this down in the comments and if so do you have any specific pieces solos or audition excerpts or anything that you want to see me kind of walk through and explain and, and play for you mm -hmm.